In this video, we are going to be discussing the topics in chapter 16, which are conjugated pi systems and pericyclic reactions. When we're talking about conjugated systems, we should first establish where we can find a conjugated system. And in order to discuss that, we need to talk about the different classes of dienes. A diene, as you can see by the name, represents two, that's where the di comes from. And then the ene portion represents carbon-carbon double bonds. When it comes to the classes of diene, as you can see, we have cumulated, conjugated, and isolated. The only type of diene that is going to have a conjugation is going to be the one that is uh, named conjugated. Let's now look at them more closely. It, when it comes to the first type of diene, as you can see, accumulated diene, the pi bonds are going to be adjacent to one another. These pi bonds, because of the way that the molecule is, are going to be perpendicular to one another. So this system does not have a conjugation. So this, there's no conjugation. In a conjugated system, which is the second type of diene, understand that what we have are pi bonds that are separated by a single bond. But the key feature here is that in there we have a continuous system of overlapping p orbitals. As you can see, and is illustrated by the drawing of the p orbitals that are present um, because of the filled p orbital by the presence of the pi bond in our conjugated system as you can see and I, if i label the carbons this carbon atom going to be this carbon atom in the diene this is going to be this one this one is going to be present here and lastly this represents this one understand that that last ch3 is not illustrated there um, because it is sp3 hybridized but understand that a conjugated diene is going to have this continuous system of overlapping p orbitals. Now, the third type of diene that we have, which also contains no conjugation, is going to be an isolated diene. And as you can see, this isolated diene that even though in the beginning we're going to see... Uh, semi-continuous p orbital the continuity is going to stop because if i look at the molecule this carbon that i just highlighted in green let me just erase this and re-highlight it so this carbon that i highlighted in green which exists here breaks the continuity because it is sp Three hybridize. So understand that an isolated diene, because of the presence of that sp3 carbon, it does not represent a conjugated system. So the only time that we have conjugation is in the second type of diene. Now, we also need to talk about how do we prepare these dienes. And as you can see from the mechanisms that we have in the following slide, a sterically hindered base can be used to form diene via an elimination reaction. <clears throat> now, your starting material can be one of two things. You can have an allylic bromide and then the elimination reaction is going to happen by this proton that I illustrated being lost. I remember that your bulky base in this case, I'm just going to illustrate this base with a B minus is going to pull this proton, create the carbon carbon double bond, and the bromine is going to leave. Or the other way to synthesize that diene is if you have that bulky base, that T butoxide is going to do a double elimination, okay, into a dihalite molecule. Um, make sure that you practice the, uh, the conceptual point 16.2 to explore more of those uh, mechanisms. Now, understand that in a conjugated diene system, 
the single bonds okay that are part of these conjugated pi systems are going to be shorter when we compare them to a regular single bond so as you can see um, in the example that we have when we look at the measurement between that's a single bond in an ethane molecule those electrons that are shared between the two carbon atoms uh, and the bond length of that single bond is going to be about 153 picometers while the one that is found in the diene that is conjugated as you can see is shorter it is about uh, 148 picometers Understand that this observation of having a shorter bond length between uh, the two dienes in a conjugated system is at least in part due to the sp2 overlap that is going to happen. Remember that this carbon atom is an sp2, this carbon atom is an sp2, okay? And when we compare it to a regular ethane molecule, remember that those two are sp3s. So that single bond, because it is in between those uh, sp2 carbons, is what makes it shorter. Now, another thing that it is important to establish is what is the s character that is found in these systems, okay? Understand that the more s character something has, the shorter the orbital and the shorter the sigma bond will be. So. This is just another trend that you guys need to be familiar with. And remember that when we are comparing a p orbital versus an sp3 versus an sp2 versus an sp and versus an s, and we look at the s character, all we're taking into consider is like what is the contribution to the total percentage of our hybrid orbital or the orbital by itself of that s orbital so as you can see p doesn't have any s that's how that's why it has zero s character sp3 remember because there's three p's in it s is only contributing a quarter or 25 percent okay of that 100 percent total in the hybrid orbital when it comes to sp2 Again, because we have a total of three in an sp2, then that means that the s character is 33% versus in an sp. As you can see, we have a 50% s character, and in an s orbital, we have a 100% s character. When we were comparing before in a conjugated system versus a carbon carbon sigma bond remember that we are comparing in s and an sp3 versus an sp in uh, or sp3 versus sp2 and because sp2 has a higher s character this is another argument of why we know that that bond length is shorter okay for the sigma bond that it is in between the two carbon carbon double bonds in a conjugated system Now, another thing that it is very important to note is that these conjugated systems are actually very stable. When we look at the heats of hydrogenation, okay, specifically for conjugated dienes, understand that these conjugated dienes are going to be lower in energy than alkenes. Because if we look at the um, heats of hydrogenation, basically what we're looking here is that if we do a hydrogenation reaction on them, how much heat is released. Notice that, is a, that there is about a 15 kilojoule difference between having two alkenes versus having a diene. So because, as you can see, the potential energy for that diene is lower than two alkenes, okay? but we still have a release of energy overall when it comes to the hydrogenation, that 15 kilojoule difference establishes that the lower in energy you are, the more stable you are. So understand that when it comes to this, this conjugated diene is also a very stable molecule. Now, understand that these diene systems are going to have different uh, conformations, okay? 
generally we know that those sigma bonds freely rotate. So understand that what is happening overall is that there's going to be two stable rotational conformations and this we are just dealing with the example of butadiene okay which is going to be the simplest diene molecule okay the two rotational conformations that we have for butadiene is going to be s cis and s trans. S cis, the S just means single, okay, because we have that single bond in between the two carbon-carbon double bond. So when the two carbon-carbon bond double bonds are facing the same side of the molecule, that's what makes an S cis. Whenever we have an S trans, as you can see, the carbon-carbon double bond is going to be on opposite sides of that sigma bonds. Understand that the P orbitals are going to be conjugated in both systems. And to illustrate how do the P orbitals illustrate this conjugation, we have in the bottom an illustration showing us how there's still a continuous P orbital, okay, that it is present in any of these two rotational conformations. Now, when we are actually comparing which one is more stable, S cis or S trans, notice that the S trans is lower in energy because it has less steric hindrance. So this energy diagram is just illustrating the dihedral angle plotted against the potential energy of a particular molecule. So as you can see here, when we have the S cis molecule, and as is going in rotationally trying to achieve that S trans, as you can see, there is, for example, here, a curve that is illustrating an increase, okay, that when this is rotating about 90 degrees, there is an increase in energy that is about 15 kilojoules per mole. Then, as we keep on rotating, when it gets to about 180 degrees, as you can see, then when we compare this, the S trans is going to be lower in energy overall compared to the S cis. Okay, and it because it's lower in energy, okay, is going to be more stable. 